Hey, everyone, welcome to 996 Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog it's discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. And yeah, this it feels exactly like that time when Domi was traded. Uh, Domi was one of my favorite players on the Coyotes. Um, but yeah, I really, really love John Chica and, and what he did for the team and what, I mean, the, the state the team was in, the roster he inherited at the time. And before I get into it, I'm gonna link a video I made last summer um, comparing the roster John Chica inherited over um, replacing Don Maloney and the roster he managed to evolve it into in just a short span of three years. Um, that'll be linked below. But yeah, I really appreciated his work. I thought he was one of the better things to happen to the Coyotes since Shane Doan. And obviously, even mentioning Shane Doan and John Chuck in the same sentence, um, that whole debacle of telling Shane Doan he wasn't going to come back to the team over breakfast. Yeah, that was a little blemish on an overall amazing stellar record for John Chica. I mean, not too many bad trades. I mean, I already mentioned the Domi trade, which I didn't like, but after the fact, you know, Domi wanted out of Arizona, wanted to go to a big market. So uh, John Chica's hands were tied. He was on an expiring contract. He made a trade. It didn't work out with Galchenyuk. He flips Galchenyuk for Phil Kessel which on paper is an amazing trade, but obviously uh, Phil Kessel was injured throughout the whole season, playing injured throughout his whole first season with the Coyotes. And that's kind of like the story with John Chica's roster. John Chica never had really a full, healthy roster. I mean, someone was always getting injured, either Ranta one year or Kemper the next year, or Jomerson. In two of his three years with the Coyotes, missing half the season. Um, forwards getting injured. Last season, everyone was injured. Nick Schmaltz, he trades for Nick Schmaltz. Nick Schmaltz tears it up in his first 10, 14 games and then gets injured for the rest of the season. I mean, there's so much bad luck um, with all the. So much bad luck with his team in terms of injuries. And it really, the team never had the team was never fully healthy and the product the team that John Chica built on paper never you know never came to fruition from paper to the on ice product uh, we got the team got there a little bit in the first half of the season when everyone was healthy you know everything was good they were uh, they were a playoff team they were top three in division for a long time um, they were first place in the division for a period um, for weeks, they were a playoff team, and then Kemper gets injured right when they acquire Taylor Hall. John Rusain gets injured. Jason Demers gets injured. The more uh, Phil Kessel, it comes out that he was injured this whole season, playing through an injury, and Brad Richardson also playing through the whole season injured. So, yeah, it was very unfortunate. This team was on fire, and when Kemper went down, um, this team really spiraled out of control. I think all the injuries ended up getting catching up to them as the season went on because the latter half of the season, they just didn't have the juice or the gas. And obviously someone could say, you know, why is this team relying on the goaltender of Kemper? It's like, that is true, but there are also defensive injuries, like I mentioned with John Merson and Demers. I mean, trying, trying, if this team was always healthy or just... Pivotal players weren't always injured. Uh, this team was really good to watch and fun to watch. And they're hanging on by a thread. And luckily they managed to make it to the uh, qualify qualifying playoffs that starts. Uh, the exhibition game is this week and it, the official playoffs are next week. So we'll see. It's a lot of distra distractions uh, right before the playoffs start. Um, hopefully the team could just galvanize themselves and um, just play really good. Everyone is really everyone is healthy. Rick Tockett has said this is the healthiest team he's ever seen. Right now, everyone's healthy. Everyone's a hundred percent. So hopefully they do some damage. Um, if 
to talk about how John Chica left, uh, he got offered a job opportunity six weeks ago, not even an NHL opportunity. We, as of this time that I'm making the video, um, that professional opportunity hasn't been disclosed, so we don't know. We know it's not a hockey job. So he was offered uh, a new opportunity, and he took it, even though he signed an extension just a few months ago in November. So, I mean, the team did allow him to seek out to um, entertain the opportunity. I guess the ownership thought that John Chico wouldn't actually take it, but it must have been such a lucrative business opportunity that he decided to take it, um, which I don't blame John Chico for taking it. If it's a wonderful job, I don't know what the job is, but I bet it better be a really good job. But, you know, he really didn't leave the team in a bad spot. Um, Steve Sullivan is going to be the interim GM. He was a GM of the Tucson Roadrunners for the past three years and an assistant to John Chica. So hopefully he learned everything from John. And, um, you know, it's not a rough transition from John to Steve Sullivan. And hopefully he's learned a lot from John Chica. Um, the ownership is probably going to be more hands-on maybe they already took taylor hall out for dinner to discuss a contract a couple weeks ago when all this was happening behind the scenes so we'll see how that plays out but you know yeah i mean whole john chica built this team obviously everyone's going to say well, he built a cap strap team the coyotes are right against the cap yeah for one more season i mean on paper if you see the Coyotes roster on paper, that's a bubble playoff team. They could, they could even push for the playoffs, and they did exactly that for the first half of the season when they were healthy. This team could be a playoff team in their Pacific, in the Pacific Division. It's a weaker division. Um, they can do it. They're obviously not playing to their ceiling because, for some reason, Rick Tockett's style doesn't really jive with the type of players John Chica has given to him. Um, but on paper, this is a well enough Bills team to make the playoffs, and that was the goal for John Chica. So after this next season, I mean, it's pretty wide open. The only players on long-term contracts are Keller, OEL, Chikrin, Dvorak. Um, Kessel has an extra year compared to everyone else, but I mean, the whole defensive core only has one year left. John Merson, Goligoski, Demers... Um, except OEL. So, I mean, Steve Sullivan is going to get a clean slate in one more year. And I'm happy to see this team with this roster play out one more year. I know they don't have enough money for Taylor Hall, but, you know, even before we acquired Taylor Hall, that seemed like a pipe dream to, to acquire such a high end ta talent on top of Phil Kessel. You know, we all thought Phil Kessel was that big play, that trump card, but. John Chica managed to get another one in Taylor Hall. So that was just like house money and just a cherry on top of this roster. So I don't think John Chica built his team to acquire two high-end free agents and, and not a free agents, but high-end players in Kessel and Hall. It was mainly just built to acquire Kessel and Hall was a cherry on top. Obviously, I'd rather have Hall than Kessel. We all do. But that just, you know, Hall was just a rental. We'll see if they can manage something and get a contract out of him and make some moves. But, I mean, Steve Sullivan's going to get a good roster and a lot of wiggle room in one more year to expand on that roster and turn over, see what he likes for that one year, and then um, see who he brings in. And hopefully he learned a lot from John Chica. Um, I love the team Chica built. I love that he built a team that if it didn't work out, that he had light at the end of the tunnel to turn it over. And which is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that they don't, they're only cap strapped for one more season. Because after that, even with the Seattle draft, um, this the Coyotes will have so much cap room to make some moves. And the Hosa contract and Ribeiro is off the books. So I think Ribeiro is already off the books. But yeah, that's I just want to make this video. I'll make a preview for the Nashville Predators and the Arizona Coyotes um, matchup. It to either tomorrow or the day after but just want to get my my raw thoughts on John Chica and just thank him for everything he's done so that's it for me thank you for watching and thank you for your support